and welcome to another episode of Book to Screen, Book to Adaptation, Book versus Movie. I haven't decided what I actually want to call these types of videos, so if anyone has any suggestions, please let me know. This time I am going to be reading and watching Catherine Called Birdie. I had not thought about this book for a long time until I read that Lena Dunham had decided to do a film adaptation. I was obsessed with all things historical fiction when I was a kid and I especially loved anything that was written in the form of a diary. And you'd be surprised how many children's books there are set in historical periods but written in the form of a diary. Catherine Called Birdie, as you can see from the very scrappy library discard sale book that I have, I presumably found this in the discard sale. They usually went for a dollar or 50 cents sometimes, so I probably just picked this one up purely on the basis that it was a historical fiction diary. My memory of this one is that this is a particularly good example of that genre. As you can see on the cover, it says a Newbury Honor Book, which I assume is quite a prestigious children's book prize. And this follows a character called Catherine. She's a young teenager living in the medieval ages. As far as I remember, she's the daughter of a relatively well-off family, but not super high class or anything. She's of an age where her father is already trying to marry her off. And as far as I remember, Catherine is not particularly pleased about this. And she's very much a character that you would describe as ahead of her time. She's very independent and modern thinking and does not fit into the medieval world that she has been born into. Considering my opinion of this book was it was one of those obscure historical fiction books that I used to read as a kid, the fact that Lena Dunham had also read it as a child and loved it enough that she wanted to do a film adaptation was quite surprising to me. Who knew I had so much in common with Lena Dunham? But then maybe in America, as I believe this author is American, this book was much more popular than it was in Australia. I have seen the trailer for Catherine Called Birdie. It actually looks really good. It's been getting really good reviews. It's already been released at film festivals and I think it's in cinemas over in America and maybe the UK as well. It's definitely not in cinemas in Australia sadly or I would definitely be going to see it but it is on Amazon Prime. The film stars a whole heap of British actors. It has Bella Ramsey as Catherine who's probably best known for being in Game of Thrones. It has Andrew Scott as her dad which is such a great piece of casting because he has such a hectic style of acting. I just think he's going to be so funny. Billy Piper plays her mother. You have Joe Alwyn as her like hot uncle. And I'm sure there'll be plenty of other British actors as side characters that I'll recognize as well. So the release of this film has given me a great excuse to go back and read this again, see if it still holds up, see if I still enjoy it just as much as an adult. And I'm really excited to delve back into my historical fiction love because I just haven't kept that up as an adult. Partly because I don't really like historical fiction adult books because as far as I can work out they're either super heavy on the romance or incredibly like dense to get through. So as a side note if anyone has any good adult historical fiction recommendations do let me know in the comments as well. Today is a public holiday so I am dedicating this day to reading this book. So I'm about halfway through Catherine Called Birdie and so far this book is not really holding up to a reread as an adult. It's always really interesting reading books that I absolutely loved when I was a kid because I think a lot of the time it just shows how much my imagination was a huge part of the reading experience. Like some of those books that I've read as an adult, I can just see that the content of the book was just a starting point for my imagination to just go a little bit wild and be kind of inspired by whatever I was reading. This book is very light on plot 
Basically, the only thing that's happening is you have this girl called Catherine. Her father keeps trying to marry her off, but she very easily gets out of it by either behaving badly or her father behaves badly and scares off the suitors. Each little diary entry is so short. There's like five or six on each page pretty much. So most of the events that are happening in one day get covered very, very quickly. You're certainly not getting much depth of character or story. The other part of the story is that her friend Alice and her uncle George were in love and can't be together because she has to marry someone much more wealthy than him. So Catherine not wanting to lose the attention of either of them puts a curse on them and so she thinks that the reason they can't get married is because she's put a curse on them. But again, it's only kind of mentioned briefly. Really the most detail you get is just her day-to-day -day life living in this manor house, all the tasks that she has to do. She's either having to sew or help make soap or do things like that because they're not wealthy enough to have servants to do everything for them. But she is too wealthy to go out and play with the villagers basically, which is what she really wants to do most of the time. Some things I'm picking up on now that I didn't get when I was a kid are some of the more historical events like the king forcing all Jewish people to leave Britain, which is not something I remembered from reading this book at all. But there's a part where on their way to leaving Britain, a group of Jewish people stay in their hall overnight and Catherine sort of goes and interacts with them and realizes that all the stories she's heard about Jewish people being evil are clearly not true because these people just look like any other person. So that's quite a nice thing to read in a kid's book to sort of introduce kids to the idea of anti-Semitism, even though obviously I wasn't taking it in because I didn't remember that bit. But yeah, it's definitely not quite as funny and witty as I remember it being. Most of the humor is kind of gross out humor. I can definitely see why I enjoyed it when I was younger. I would say it's immersive in the era, but it's certainly not an in-depth look at the era, I think. Obviously, I still have half of the book to go, but I can't imagine the pace of it changing up that much. I have a feeling that the film is going to have changed quite a lot of stuff because you definitely couldn't adapt this straight up into a film. You'd have to structure it way more into a plot. It's actually made me even more interested in seeing the film because I will be so fascinated to see how Lena Dunham has adapted this book. So I finished Catherine Called Birdie last week. Basically, the plot of this book is Catherine trying not to um, allow herself to get married off to these awful suitors that her father has picked for her. He's obviously only picking them in regards to how much like land or power or just like pigs he can get off them. And in the last half of the book, she is promised to be married to this man that she calls Shaggy Beard. He's much older than her and in fact has his own son, a similar age to her. I guess I can talk about the end. I feel like it's not really a spoiler for a book that's this old, but basically in the end, Shaggy Beard miraculously dies and Stephen, his son, becomes the Lord of the Manor. So she is then betrothed to him and he seems like a much nicer option in the fact that he actually likes to have a bath and reads. She actually hasn't met him, but the, the book ends with her feeling at least hopeful that although she has to be married to someone, at least this person is not like the worst option. Various female characters throughout the book keep telling Catherine that she needs to be herself. She is constantly complaining that she can't be someone else, like she can't be a villager because she thinks they're much freer than she is. She wishes that she could go be part of royalty because she thinks they must have more freedom. She basically just wishes she could be anyone but a young woman in the medieval era. And you kind of have a few older female characters telling her, well, you know, you should be grateful that you are you because you're a really special person and you should just find the best way to be yourself, which in a way is a nice sentiment. And the book is obviously keeping to the historical period in that in reality, Catherine would never have been able to have complete freedom. She would have to be married to someone. And so these older female characters are a way of explaining how women, even though they were stuck in very narrow circumstances, were able to make a life of their own in their own way and just sort of be a bit more practical about it. It's a nice idea in terms of the context of the time period, but reading it as a modern person is obviously a bit of a downer. The last half of the book definitely remains quite plotless though, so I'm very curious to see if the film adds more of a plot into it 
or whether it keeps that quite episodic structure. I'm definitely getting the sense that the characters are going to be a little bit different from the book as well. Her father is described as being quite boorish and disgusting and no table manners and basically nothing like Andrew Scott who plays him in the film. So. That character is definitely, I assume, going to be quite different. Very interested to see how it will be done. And knowing Lena Dunham, her sensibilities are unusual to say the least. It is out now on Amazon Prime, so I think I will just go watch it and tell you my thoughts about it after I've seen it. So I really enjoyed the film. Four stars from me. I thought it was really great. It made me cry several times which usually is an automatic four stars if something gets me really emotionally involved that's like basically the difference between three and a half and four for me it was definitely quite different from the book it didn't so much as have a different plot as just more emphasize the more interesting parts of the story and had much less of her sort of day-to-day -day life that the book really focused on the main thing that was changed was the relationships between Catherine and her family. So as I predicted, Andrew Scott was a very different character as her father than the way her father is portrayed in the book. He's much less of a sort of disgusting ruffian in terms of the way Catherine describes him. I'm more just irresponsible with money. He's almost a bit of a dandy because he kind of walks around in these like expensive looking robes. Right at the beginning of the film, he's like bought a tiger from India, which ends up like arriving dead. And so he's just kind of wasting all their money on frivolous things. And that is what pushes him to try and marry off Catherine because he's hoping for a massive dowry that will help them out. But even from the beginning, you're kind of seeing his reluctance to do that to Catherine. It's actually someone else who suggests to him that he should do that and he's kind of seeing it as his last option. So his anger at Catherine and his pressuring her to just marry anyone that he sets her up with is more to do with a desperation of not wanting his family to fall into disrepute from lack of money. Bella Ramsey as Catherine is so excellent. She's so funny. She's so natural. Everyone in this film is clearly been directed to be incredibly naturalistic in their performances and it actually works really well. They're not talking in modern language as such, but it's certainly very simplified language compared to how they probably would have talked back then. And it does use a lot of modern music throughout as well. So it's actually quite a nice combination of an attempt at sort of a period setting that's quite immersive while also not holding itself too strict to that. I did see a review that compared it to Horrible Histories, the TV show, and I do think the tone is quite similar actually. It's obviously saying things about a women's place in society and fighting against patriarchal ideas and that kind of thing. It really is just mostly a fun romp and mainly focusing on the characters and the intimate relationships between the family, especially between her and the older people in her life her father but also her mother played by Billy Piper who is really nice in the role she gets to be really funny as well and between her and her sort of nurse maid or like nanny I guess Moana played by Leslie Sharp there's the relationship she has with her brothers as well it is a really nice story about a teenager actually seeing these adults as real people for the first time as she's growing up and also about how much she gives them as well which is another thing that she has to learn throughout the film and I really liked that that was the focus of the film because I think a lot of teenage aimed films do focus on the friendships between teenagers but I think that process when you are a teenager of going from child to young adult part of that process is your relationship with your parents or just adults in your life changing because those relationships inevitably do change when you grow up and it can be quite a painful process but it can be so rewarding as well and I really loved the way that film portrayed that. The ending is definitely changed from the book as well. I'm not sure I liked the ending as much as the books just in that it didn't feel very realistic for the time, but I think people watching would have been quite annoyed at the book's ending. And I think it makes much more sense in the context of this film to end it the way they did. And it doesn't go too far in the sort of unrealistic direction. I think it still works well enough for the time period as well. And it is a really sweet ending as well in a lot of ways. I really had a good time, really enjoyed it. It's just really sweet, really fun, a really good YA film, which I feel like we don't necessarily get a lot of that these days. I think a lot of films feature teenagers or adults playing teenagers in them. That's another thing is that Bella Ramsey genuinely is quite a young or was quite young when she filmed this. So 
she is genuinely a teenager, not an adult playing a teenager. But yeah, we get a lot of films about teenagers played by adults. I think there's something much more powerful to watch, especially younger teenagers like 13, 14. Someone genuinely your own age, going through things you are actually going through on screen, even if it's set in a medieval era. I know I absolutely would have loved it at age 13, 14. So that's the end of the video. Let me know if you read Catherine called Birdie when you were a teenager. If you know of any other books that are about to be adapted into films that I can do more videos like this on, let me know in the comments. I'm always curious to contrast and compare books and films. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.